fans, once again, it is me, D. Hard Mizumani G. Yes, this time I'm going to be doing a spoiler review of It Chapter 2. Yes, because I've already did a non-spoiler review, so this is going to be the spoiler review. I will mention some certain aspects and points about the movie that I enjoyed. <laughs> now, once again, horror fans, this is a spoiler review. If you want to take a look at my non-spoiler review, I'm going to leave a card up there. You'll start up here right there. Keep in mind, if you have not seen It Chapter 2, do not watch this video. You can either go see the movie or watch my non-spoiler review, so that way it won't ruin the greatness of this movie has done. So like I said before, you'll, uh, you can click on that card that just appeared up there, or you can just wait and see Chapter 2, and then you can watch this video. Keep in mind, this is it. You have been warned. Time for the spoiler review. No, obviously, <laughs> this was such a fantastic film, and I have a lot of points I would like to go over. Mainly, the first one is all the Easter eggs that you see that are sprinkled throughout the film. Uh, whether it's referencing some pictures from Warner Brothers, there's a uh, studio that you see at the end of the film that's showing a, a Nightmare on Elm Street 5, which I thought was funny because this movie does come from New Line Cinema. <laughs> and we all know that's the house that Freddy built, so you know I had to mention there uh, uh, that little Easter egg right there. But there are a lot of other Easter eggs in the film regarding Stephen King and his book. Uh, one of the first ones is that we see references to the turtle Martin. Martin, I think I had, that's how you pronounce his name, the turtle, that is definitely featured in the book. We saw that in a turtle in the first chapter one. And we see a turtle in chapter two when Richie goes to high school and we see that turtle model of a turtle right there. So you see Easter egg right there. Now, in the park where Bill encounters that kid near his uh, near his old home on the skateboard, if you could really take a close look at it, if you see a picture of it, there's a little design on the skateboard that's similar to the design of the carpet in The Shining. So I thought there was a nice reference, Stephen King reference there. Uh, the clowns in the county fair that uh, Bill runs into going after that same kid, the clowns have a similar design of Tim Curry's pretty, uh, Pennywise clown outfit and the 1990 miniseries. And of course, the uh, actress who plays Annie's mom, Molly Atkinson, she also plays his wife, who has the same overprotective traits that his mother has. So basically, Eric married his mother. <laughs> uh, there's some other Easter eggs that are sprinkled throughout the film, but I thought those were some nice nods, some nice little Easter eggs that you see throughout the film. And referenced the book and other things referencing uh, New Line Cinema and Warner Brothers. So I thought the film did a nice job with that. Now, to be honest, I could expect a little bit more from Henry Bowers in this film. Because I know he does have a little more prominent role in the 1990 miniseries. But here he has a very limited pre presence in the film. Now, I do like the fact that uh, Andy Machete lets Eddie kill, uh, kill him as uh, he tormented him the most as a kid. You know, he broke his arm when he was a kid, and so uh, he gets nicely stabbed in the head when he's finding uh, Mike uh, right in the library scene. I thought that was a nice uh, little treatment to have Eddie kill him because, you know, Eddie was so scared of him, and he's the one that turns out to kill him. So, <laughs> so you know what they say, karma come will bite you in the, bat, in the ass, and uh, that's what Henry gets. Now, one of the best things I like about the film, and I didn't want to say this in my non-spoiler review, but one of the best things I like were the intercut scenes between the child and adult actors of the Losers Club. You know, we see that in the Hidden Clubhouse, where we switch scenes, we switch scenes to the younger kids. Uh, when we saw, we see Ben, how he first built the Hidden Clubhouse, and how, how they all interact with each other. I love that there was a great interactive scene. We also see how much they loved each other, especially between uh, Richie and Eddie. I thought they were very great with their friendly banter. Uh, the hit and love triangle that we see Ben have with Beverly, and we see how he just looks so dis dis disappointed and dejected when uh, Bill and Beverly start flirting with each other, and even though he has his hidden love for her, even back then. And I thought it was really good. It actually gets you to bond more with the children because you miss them and how great they were in Chapter 1. And that scene right there of going to the clubhouse makes you hopefully and gratefully that they'll survive this encounter with Pennywise. Now, you know, I got to talk about the creatures <laughs> that attack the adults. Now, uh, they, we do see the, the germ guy, I don't know what he is, that attacks Eddie in the first one. He comes back 
in this one right here. So we, he's back again. But there are some new creatures that we see in this film right here. Especially, uh, I think, the, what do you call it, Mrs. Kirsch. I thought she was the best of them all. Uh, no, they might not be as menacing as they were in Chapter 1, but they were still creepy looking and scary. Uh, I love the fortune cookie scene in the beginning of the film when you see the eye pop out and that little bat, or no, that crab, that spider with the baby's face on it and the crab with the one eye or the octopus with the one eye, the one winged bat and the floating heads in the, in the ocean and the, uh, um, what do you call those, uh, aquariums. Yeah, fish tanks. Fish tanks, yeah. The yeah, fish tanks, yeah. I thought it was a well done scene. It was real creepy. <laughs> the adults all creeped out. <laughs> and of course, when uh, Richie starts smashing the table up, of course, you know, none of it was real. But it was a great, great effect. It was a nice way to start the movie. But I think one of the best effects that we saw was the Spider Stanley head, <laughs> which I thought was fantastic. <laughs> First of all, seeing Stanley's head, the young Stanley, come out of the refrigerator toward uh, when we get ready to the third act of the film, where they're at the Nobot house, and they get ready to go into Pennywise's lair, and, you know, we see that the uh, Witcher Palm is there, and it was just a fantastic scene, and, of course, it's a great nod to the spider creature from John Carpenter's The Thing. You know that's the first thing when you see that scene, first thing will pop in your head is the spider scene, because it's just basically the same thing. I just love their reactions to it. <laughs> it was a great job, and, of course, <laughs> I love it when Richie is, <laughs> when you see some gook coming from his, <laughs> which I thought was funny, some spider gook come down, and Richie looks up, and he sees the spider. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> I love that scene. It was a great, it was a great scene all around. It was well done. I like the practical. That was probably the only thing that was practical effects. I don't think it was, it might have been some CGI on it, but it looked nice. I thought it was designed very well. Uh, it was just fantastic. Now, a similar how Chapter 1 started. Chapter 2 starts off very brutal. I mean, oh, God. I mean, these uh, these poor uh, lovers that are minding their own business and they get attacked and beat the crap up by these homophobia, uh, by these homophobes. And uh, it just makes you not surprised why uh, it chose Derry to nest in because the town simply just breeded hatred, you know, with uh, prejudice, with, uh, towards African Americans and the homophobia that they have. I mean, even in the first chapter, we see how Bowers just, you know, can't stand. They use the F word a lot in the, in the first one and the second one. As we all know, hate turns to anger, and that basically turns into fear. So, again, very brutal way to start the film was that first scene uh, with them, with the guys beating up the, uh, the gay lovers. It's just a brutal way to start the film, just like. Uh, in the beginning of chapter one, when Pennywise attacks Georgie and bites his uh, bites his uh, uh, shoulder out off, very brutal way. So I, I'm not surprised how brutal the film is, but it just shows you why uh, it chose Derry to nest there because the town was so dreary, it's hateful, it was disgusting, and a lot of bad things happened. So that's why you think Pennywise nested there. Now, one thing I, I'm not surprised is that the, this movie follows a similar path the way the 1990 series uh, series did. You know, Stanley kills himself in the beginning of uh, when he does come over after Mike calls. And unfortunately, Eddie is killed by Pennywise because this also happens in the book as well. But what they actually do different in this particular movie is the nice letter that Stanley writes uh, in the end of the movie. It's a very nice, poetic letter. Uh, reason why he explains why he killed himself because he feels as though that he would not be any good if he was there so if he takes his own life it'll draw the rest of the losers together so that way so again like i said he probably felt compelled that this would bring all the losers together so that way they can defeat it it was a very very sad scene very dramatic and uh, uh kind of almost brought a tear to my eye because it's a, it was such a point that and moving and very dramatic moment there in the movie. And I felt, you know, it's really sad that he decided to do that way. But he felt as though this is the best way for them to defeat uh, it. Now, one of the things I truly did like about this movie is that how well it does stick from the book. It definitely borrows from the book. But what the TV series did not do, like performing the ritual of Chud. Now, that's a very important aspect in the book, uh, especially in the first part of the book. Because we all know if you read the book, 
Bill was the one who performs the ritual of Chud and he eventually gets sucked into this whole big uh, interdimensional uh, dimension where he sees the turtle and he sees everything and he sees how it is created and he figures so they actually will tell him how to defeat it. So I like the fact is how this particular uh, mini, this particular movie sticks to many aspects of the book. So I really thought it was a great way uh, that movie does that. Now, as I stated in my non-spoiler review, we do have some secrets that the adult version of the Losers Club carry. One of them is a big secret is Bill's character in the movie. Uh, he, uh, we finally discovered that he really wasn't sick when Georgie was eventually killed by Pennywise. We come to find out that he really didn't want to go out and play with Georgie in the rain, so he pretended he was sick. And eventually, unfortunately, Georgie gets killed. And he really had a guilt trip over that. Uh, and it was nice to see him overcome that. Especially that encounter when he encounters Georgie and his older self in the old house right there. It's only the third act of the film. I thought it was a great way for him to finally let the guilt go and move on and save his friends and defeat Pennywise. So I thought that's one of the best, one of the best character arcs in the film that we see that secret. Now another secret that we find in the film is Bill's love for Beverly. But we, we all kind of knew that uh, that stupid love triangle. I, I guess I don't know. I guess it's some type of dramatic aspect in the film. Uh, and I like how the actor, um, I think it was Jay. I can't remember the. And I like J. Ryan's performance as Ben. You can see that he still harbors the same feelings for Beverly uh, even now. And he finally gets the, uh, the numptions to finally admit his love for Beverly. Of course, in a dramatic way, seeing him Beverly about to drown. She about to drown in a, a little uh, scene about her greatest fear uh, when she gets teased by everyone for being uh, loose. And he gets he's about to drown in sand. Because Pennywise thinks that despite the fact he may be fit, he's still that fat little kid that probably will die alone. So I really thought that was a nice little touch for between for uh, Ben and Beverly's character. Finally, meant that they actually do love each other. And of course, you know, like I said, my favorite character is obviously uh, Richie. I loved him in the chapter one, and I love him here. Bill Hader once again did a fantastic job. I was finally glad the fact that he actually acknowledges his sexuality. You know, the film doesn't allow him to come out and admit that he's gay, but he finally comes to terms with who he really is, and I really love Eddie. And I love the fact because they were the two best parts of the movie. I love Out of the Loser. I love their friendly banter. But I love the fact that the, how Richie comes to terms with his sexuality in the movie. Now, one of the things I've been hearing from other people's reviews is that, that this film is not as scary, or the monsters are not as scary. And I could get that part, because Chapter 1 was indeed scary. I think that, I think the problem, I think the reason why is because, and I said this before in uh, answering other people's questions when it comes to making comments, I think when it comes to being scared, adults have a different type of reaction to being scared as opposed to children. Obviously, children's natural reaction when they are scared is they're going to run, they're going to, they're going to try to hide. You know, when an adult gets scared, they're going to have two reactions. One is they probably will freeze, or two, they might actually make a joke about it. <laughs> and I think the film does a great job, as far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, in expressing the fear that they see. I mean, it's like this, like, say, when Richie sees Pennywise and the fair. And you, you see the people swaying back and forth right there. And his first response is, you got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> it's funny. It's like that. You know, just some of other the things when he sees, you know, he says, you got to be fucking kidding me. Uh, especially during the spider scene, because that was one great scene where he sees uh, Stanley's head. And it turns into a spider. His first response is, you got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> you know, that's the type of reaction that Duff will have. But unfortunately, kids are going to have a different type of reaction. They're going to be scared. They're going to run. So I think that's where the problem lies. I just think that in this particular version, you know, where you have adults, they're not going to have the same type of reaction. And I think some of the creatures or the forms that Pennywise take probably not as menacing as the forms as he took in the first movie. So I think that's where the separation goes. Now, I got to talk about that third act. <laughs> now, my only, like I said, what, like I said, my non spoiler review, I think that the third act might have went a bit too long, in my, in my opinion. I think if they had cut 
some of the scenes down a bit. I think the pacing would have worked a little better. Not that I had a problem with what was going on. I thought it just went on a bit too long. Uh, I love the fact that even though mostly all the monsters were CGI, especially uh, the so-called spider Pennywise uh, during the end of the, during the, that last part where Pennywise actually becomes a spider. And uh, I actually enjoyed that scene a lot more. Thank God it was no fucking paper machete spider. I'll never get over that, sorry. <laughs> he was still threatening. He was still menacing. Uh, in that particular scene, he was. Uh, I thought Bill Skarsgård did a great job and, you know, with his uh, taunting, uh, with his menacing, with how dangerous he was. You know, there's a scene where uh, he uh, has Richie staring at his deadlights, and then Eddie finally gets the gumption to do something great and, uh, and, you know, and supposedly thinks he's killed Pennywise, which unfortunately we all know that he's not dead yet. And I thought there was a nice, effective scene right there. Everything kind of works. I just thought it went on a kind of a tad bit too long. But uh, yeah, yeah, and I really didn't have a problem with the CGI Pennywise Spider. I know some people might have a problem with that, but like I said before, I did enjoy the third act. Like I said, even though it went on a bit too long, but everything kind of flowed nicely as far as you know, seeing Pennywise and the Spider, and uh, how the Losers Club finally comes to in the end. And basically, what they did the same thing because they did it in the book and they did it in the miniseries is that they finally pull his heart out, take it, and then squeeze it and crush it together and end his reign of terror whatsoever. So I thought it was a nice fitting end uh, as far as the kid, the Losers Club final battle with Pennywise and It. So there you go, guys. That's uh, my spoiler review of It, Chapter 2. Like I said, in my non-spoiler review, I actually gave it 5 out of my 5 gold coins. I believe that is the first time I ever gave a horror movie. Uh, that distinction because that's how much I enjoyed the movie a lot. Like I said, you have great, great acting from the entire cast. Uh, Bill Skarsgård was once again great as Pennywise. Uh, everything was fine. I loved the design of the new creatures. I even liked seeing some of the old creatures return. Uh, like I said, it was the best horror movie I've seen so far this year, and I truly enjoyed the film. So my horror fans, for those who have seen It Chapter 2, what did you think? What did you like about the film? Uh, what you didn't like about the film. Uh, leave your comments down in your comment section below and tell me your thoughts on what you like or didn't like about IT Chapter 2. But once again, that's my video for the day, guys. Hope you did enjoy it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And once again, this is your first time here. Please hit the subscribe button and ring that notification bell. That way you can come and enjoy the horror experience with me, the horror of Isamani G. And as always, all my social media links will be down in the description box below as well. Once again, my name is Lamont Smith, better known as the Horror Miser Money G. And always remember, Horror Rules. <laughs> Georgie, once again, take us home. We're out. You